Hello and welcome to episode number 224. This is the Project Management Podcast at pm-podcast.com and I'm Cornelius Fichtner. Nice to have you with us. As we are recording this episode here, there are about 1,500 project managers or so around the world who have passed the PMI Agile Certified Practitioner exam. That's the PMI ACP exam. Last year, around this time, well, there was zero. This is because the PMI ACP certification is the newest exam offered by the Project Management Institute. In today's episode, we have our first interview for you, in which a successful PMI ACP exam taker opens up to us and talks about what it was like for him. His name is Kevin Riley, and we've had him on the program a couple of times earlier this year. As you know, the rules of all PMI exams are such that we are not allowed to discuss specific questions from the exam. But we can discuss Kevin's overall experience, his general thoughts on the process, and his study recommendations to you. And since Kevin has also changed his career, and is now a trainer himself who teaches others as they are preparing for their exams, you can look forward to a great discussion and some excellent advice. During the interview, you'll hear us make several references to the Agile PrepCast. So if you yourself are interested in becoming PMI ACP certified, then please do sign up to the Agile PrepCast newsletter at pmprepcast.com slash agile and be among the first to prepare for your exam using our new sister podcast. We are furiously working to get it finished this year. And now, enjoy part one of the interview with Kevin. The Project Management Podcasts feature interview. Today with Kevin Riley, PMP. Senior Project Management Training Consultant for KRPM Training Solutions. Hello, Kevin, and welcome to the Agile PrepCast. Hi, Cornelius. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. And you yourself, you must be excited. I'm very excited. I'm embarking on a new phase of my career with the PMI ACP. Absolutely. Well, first of all, congratulations on passing the PMI ACP exam. Great milestone for you. Yes, thank you very much. It really is. When exactly did you pass? Uh, Monday, October 22nd, 2012 at approximately 9.54 a.m. <laughs> and 28 seconds. And 28 <laughs> seconds. So that makes it what, about five, six days ago? No. Uh, week? About a, yeah, about a week ago. A little. About a week ago. Okay, wonderful. Well, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Congratulations. Well, but before we move on, we have to put a big disclaimer here on top of this interview because you are not just any PMI ACP certified project manager. You are working together with me on developing the Agile PrepCast. You and I are working on this together and we are uh, we are creating the presentations and the outlines and all the content that goes into this. So we wanted to get that out of the way so that people are aware that you are in fact one of the developers of this great uh, training tool. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And glad to be aboard on that effort. <laughs> well, uh, first things first, then, with the interview here. If you had to do this again, if you had to take the PMI ACP exam again, what would you do differently? Well, it's, that, that's an interesting question, because part of my study plan was to, to do a PMI ACP boot camp, similar to what I did for the PMP exam prep. Right. So I did this to prepare for the PMP exam. It worked out very well. Um, however, I chose to do an interactive webinar for the PMI ACP course as opposed to a live boot camp. And what that basically was, was two days with someone on the other end going through some material. It was very good. Um, but what I decided was, uh, in retrospect, I think that a live boot camp, in class boot camp, would have been best as the final leg of my studying re efforts right before I took the exam. Now, like this was still live, right? But it was over the web. Yes, correct. And and okay. that's not to say that web-based seminars such as uh, webcasts, podcasts, etc., that you can re review at your own time 
um, are not valuable, but I think the combination of a live course and um, a webinar or podcast-based course really is the best recipe of the, for the PMI ACP exam success. So in other words, if you had to do it again, you wouldn't do a web-based course. You would go into a classroom. You would have yes. your students and the teacher in the classroom, and you would also do something self-study podcast recording kind of combination. Yeah, that's correct. And and the in class is I'm going to use one of the agile terms is is osmotic communication. So what you get <laughs> is you're able to pick up on conversations from other students and obviously from the instructor and it really drives home a lot of the key points not just for the PMI ACP exam prep but also for agile project management in general. Right. Okay. So why PMI ACP? Why did you choose to become PMI ACP certified? Because let me see if I remember this right. You are PMP certified. You are a certified Scrum master and you are a certified Scrum product owner. And now you're also adding PMI ACP behind your name. I mean, your titles <laughs> pretty much have more letters in them than your whole name. Than the whole alphabet, I think. <laughs> so really, so as a traditional project manager over the last basically 10 to 12 years, I've mainly been implementing projects using traditional or waterfall-based uh, project management principles and practices with, with, uh -huh. with, with mixed success. Um, so the reason why I started to go agile is because projects have become a lot more complex and traditional project management principles really don't allow for the rapid adaptation to constantly changing customer requirements. So that's one of the key things in agile project management. I've begun to realize that a traditional project, as a tra traditional project manager, management practitioner, I need to diversify and embrace those agile project management tools and techniques in order to successfully manage today's complex pro uh, projects. So the reason I became a CSM and a CSPO was to get that base down so I'm able to actually use those agile practices and principles. The reason I took the PMI ACP is that Agile is becoming so big that the Project Management Institute has actually embraced a different framework other than the Waterfall, the PMI, the PMBOK Guide, uh, fourth edition, latest edition framework, and they understand the importance of what Agile is going to give to us project managers moving forward in the future. So being certified by PMI as a PMI ACP allows me to demonstrate that I'm embracing these principles, but also how important it is to the Project Management Institute. Did you look at any other Agile certifications, um, Scrum Alliance, other certification bodies? Not, not really, because as you know, Cornelius, I'm very much attached to Project Management Institute, PMI, and uh, involved in, in them. And uh, I think it's a great organization. And since I had my CSM, my Certified Scrum Master, and Certified Scrum Product Owner um, certifications already, PMI ACP was the really, really the only one that I looked at and really the only one that I think I, that I needed. Right. What value do you see in having the certification other than what you have just said? You know, PMI has now certified me as embracing this framework. Well, as as a typical PMI certification, there are certain requirements, qualifications, etc., even to fill out the application and be accepted in the first place. So obviously there's PMP, there's PMI, RMP, Risk Management Professional PGMP program manager. So they have one of the uh, PMI has some of the best certification uh, qualifications, if you will, you know, in the world in terms of project management. But really, the PMI ACP certification shows that I a couple of things. First of all, I have proven my knowledge of the key agile tools and techniques that are available, as well as the knowledge of the different methodologies under what I'll call the agile umbrella, such as Scrum, Extreme Programming, and some of the other techniques. Um, it basically demonstrates my competency in agile project management and also documents my specific experience in implementing these tools and techniques on actual real life projects and real life uh, situations. How long did it take you then from deciding, you know, I want to take this exam, I want to be PMI ACP certified until you actually passed this exam last Monday? 
Well, it's a little embarrassing, my answer, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> um, I actually started my studying back in March of, of 2012 of this year, which was basically uh, over seven months ago. Having... Well, that's not that much, Daniel. <laughs> well, have... That's not that long. Having said that, um, the reason that I did not uh, move forward immediately on getting my PMI ACP was that I was actually involved in agile tasks, one of which was creating the Agile Prep Cast with you. Right. And also as an Agile coach for a, a local Southern California companies. So um, in retrospect, so what this did, it solidified my Agile knowledge and actually helped me in the long run in order to pass the PMI ACP exam. Plus the fact that one of my goals was to become a PMI ACP instructor, but I wasn't going to implement that phase of my career development or my next step in my career until this time of year anyway, about October, November. Um, right. Now, having said that, let me qualify that. I would not suggest that people, PM, PMI ACP aspirants, wait that long. What I would suggest is take a course, read your, read your book, and then within three to six weeks after that, take the exam because that's really all the time that you need to pass this exam. All right. Let's look at the application process itself. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the eligibility criteria here. What are they for the PMI ACP exam? Okay, so specifically for PMI ACP, the first requirement is to have a secondary degree, such as a high school diploma, associate's degree, or the global equivalent. So right off the bat, we see it's a little different than PMP uh, preparation because you don't have to have that bachelor's degree. Okay, so it's just an associate's degree, high school diploma, or global equivalent. The second is 2,000 hours of unique, non-overlapping general project experience within the last five years, okay? So general project experience mm -hmm. is, refers to anything other than specifically agile project management experience. Now, the nice thing about that is this is waived if you are already a, certified as a PMP, project management professional. So you're already 2,000 hours ahead. You don't have to document that because you've already documented that as part of the PMP exam prep application process. Mm -hmm. uh, the third one is 1,500 hours of unique, non-overlapping, agile project experience within the last three years. So this agile experience must be separate and distinct from the 2,000 hours of general project experience required that we... Right. So on the one hand, you need the general project management experience, right. plus you need the specific agile project management experience as well. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Okay. Um, the next eligibility criteria is 21 hours of formal education, which are the contact hours, in Agile Project Management using courseware approved by the PMI. By the way, the Agile PrepCast will allow you to get these 21 out. <laughs> Sorry, a little <laughs> Thank plug Thank you there. very much for that plug. <laughs> um, right. And also, as always, when you're taking any type of PMI-based certification exam, um, understanding of and agreement with the PMI Code of Ethics and Professional Conduct, mm -hmm. obviously a passing grade on the PMI ACP exam. We can talk a little bit more about what that means as we get further into the right, conversation yeah. here. And then successful completion of 30 hours or 30 PDUs of CCRs, your continuing certification requirements, over the course of each three-year certification cycle starting on the day that you pass your exam. Right. So starting last Monday, yes. you now have to begin earning Agile PDUs, right? That's correct. In order to maintain your certification. So you're PMP certified, you need project management PDUs, plus you now also need agile PDUs yes. in order to maintain your certification. That's correct. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let, let's take a look at the application itself. Uh, I remember PMP exam application, rather in-depth, detailed, <laughs> lots of information you had to input there. Um, is it the same with PMI ACP? What, what are they asking for? It's actually a scaled-down version, Cornelius. Mm -hmm. um, so if you remember the PMP exam prep, honestly, it took me 18 hours for, to right. do my PMP yeah, exam me, me application, too. Too. okay? So what's nice about the PMI ACP, there are, there are a couple of things that are a little different. First of all, if you, if you have passed your PMP exam, you already have uh, experience in filling out the application itself. 
So all that learning curve is gone. That cuts off about 50% of the time right there. In addition to that, you can actually take the application that you created for your PMP exam, ah. download it as a PDF, so you'll see the exact type of verbiage and format that you put in on your PMP exam, and you'll be able to match that. Because you know this works. You've applied for your PMP, they've accepted it, so that you know that that verbiage works for that. Okay. Right. Of course, we're talking about the, the agile yes. hours. You know, they're, we're expecting you to have done different work, to have used different methods, different approaches. Right. So you can't really use 100% the same verbiage. Plus, this is not a copy paste job. No. You have no, to yes. input the correct information for the projects that you have worked right. on. Right. So, so let me clarify yeah. what I meant by that is you've already put this information in. You know how to scale, you know, the general information down to 800 or 1,000 or 1,100 characters. So you won't be copying and pasting that previous information. But at least you know the format to use for that particular application. How long did it take you then instead of 18 hours? It took me two hours. Oh, lovely. Yeah, and, and another reason is that the uh, information that PMI is looking for is much further scaled down. First of all, you only have to document 1,500 hours instead of 4,500 mm -hmm. like you did for the PMP exam. Also, the fact that the type of information that they're looking for is just pro Agile project related. So if you remember on the PMP exam, they asked you to go back eight years, get 4,500 hours, but you had to put in specific experience in each of the process groups, the five right. process groups in the PMP exam prep from the PMBOK guide. That is not the case for the PMI ACP. All you have to do is give general agile project management experience without getting any more specific in terms of domains or anything like that. And the, the key element is that makes it easy. All you have to do is prove that the activities that you were performing were agile. You don't have to say, I was a scrum master, I was a project manager, all you, and you could be a development team member. So unlike the PMP exam prep application, you had to prove that they were uh, project management-related activities. These are just agile-related activities on a project. So whether you're a developer or a certified scrum master or just a project manager that's part-time on an agile project, all these things are, are uh, acceptable from the PMI standpoint. Right. And that's, of course, because for the project management professional mm -hmm. certification, we're talking about a project manager, yes. somebody who is a professional PM. Correct. But the PMI ACP is the Agile Certified Practitioner. Right. So anyone who practices Agile methods on their project, designers, developers, customer, liaisons, anybody who's working on a project is a practitioner. Exactly. So you don't have to have the project management experience. It's the, the, the methods, the approaches that count here. Was there anything in the whole application process that made you raise an eyebrow? Really, the only, the only thing I was initially confused about was, you know, the agile hours. But, you know, after I talked to a couple of people, they basically said, just make sure that you, you know, understand that, like you said, you're an agile practitioner, not a project manager. So for people that have been PMP certified, it's important to drive home that exact point. For PMI ACP, you're an agile practitioner. So anything you do in the agile spheres, as far as performing tasks on your agile projects, on your application, stick to those. If you can, uh, you know, if you can differentiate between that and get that mindset, then you'll be in good shape. But uh, other than that, that was about it. It was a very, very straightforward process. Lovely. You filled in your application online. I uh, suppose payment of the fees for the exam was also done online using a credit card? That's correct, Yes. So it's, right. it's basically the same as all PMI, <clears throat> all other PMI exams. Mm -hmm. Okay. And of course, once you pay, then there is the random audit that might happen to anybody. Did you get audited by any chance? No, no, I didn't. I actually didn't. Anything you did to prepare yourself for a possible audit in case it happens? Yes. One of the things that I do, and I, you know, I tell all my students, whether a PMP exam prep, PMI ACP, or just general, is to treat the application process like an interview. So what I mean by that is you're basically interviewing to be able to take this test. 
when you do an interview, a regular job interview, you have references that you have to supply to that organization that's interested in quote unquote hiring you. So what you want to do for the application process is the exact same thing. That involves a couple of steps. First of all, determine an estimate of what the hours are on the projects that you worked in, in an agile perspective. It doesn't have to be exact, okay? You don't have to get down to, I worked on this project as a scrum master for 28.25 hours, but it has to be a good estimate. And the reason being is the next step that you want to do after you've determined all the projects that you've worked on, come up with those estimates, is to contact the people that you've worked with on those projects. So if it was someone in the organization, if it was a client, a customer of yours, send them an email Let them know that you're applying for this exam and people are generally very open to helping people succeed and expand their their knowledge base. So this is not a problem. But by sending them an email, letting them know this is the estimate of hours, you can get a buy-in from them and validation from them that, yes, you worked this many hours or no, you actually worked more or you worked less. When you get that information back, you're going to use that just in case you get audited. The other thing is to make sure that the people you talk to, and you only have to go back three years for Agile for the PMI ACP, but ensure that you're still on a good working relationship with them. Make sure that you understand they're doing you a favor by being a reference and that they're agreeing to be called and verified. Um, So make sure you still know, like, and trust them. Because unfortunately, I've run into a situation with a friend who thought he know, knew, liked, and trust someone, and it ended up they did not like him at all. So just uh, you know, to put that into perspective. So again, overall, treat it just like an interview because it really is you're interviewing to be able to sit for the exam through PMI. So treat it with that amount of importance, and then you should be okay. Yes. I always tell my students who look at me wide-eyed going, are you serious? Do I really need to do this? I tell them, I only know of one person who failed the audit process, and he is now no longer allowed for life to take any PMI certification. So if you would like to be the second person I know (laughs) who this happened to, then please feel free to ignore the advice. Otherwise, please follow this advice. And that's really how serious it is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Okay, good. Uh, Once you have submitted your application, how long did it take for PMI to turn around and say, yep, we accept your application? Well, interesting question. Okay. Um, So I I submitted my application and I I thought I remembered from the PMP exam prep application, and maybe you can correct me on this. I thought that PMI actually sent you an email letting you know that your application has been accepted. I believe so, yes. <laughs> okay. So this has changed, Cornelius, for PMI ACP. Oh. I submitted my application on a Monday, and they say it normally takes five to ten business mm-hmm. days to actually go through and let you know if your application was accepted or if you need to get audited, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I never got an email. So what I decided to do is at the end of the five days, that Friday, it was actually four days, I went okay. back online and checked the status. Well, it ends up that they it only took two hours for them wow. to yeah to accept my application. So basically, my application was sitting up there for four days when I could have been scheduling my exam. So my lesson learned, or my retrospective, if you will, is when you complete your application, check on it once a day because I don't believe for the PMI ACP that PMI actually sends an email and lets you know. Be proactive, go on the website, the PMI.org website, and check on the status of your exam application. And of course, check your spam filter as well. Yes, Who knows? absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. So now that you knew application has been accepted, how did you schedule the actual exam? So what you do is after it's accepted, you basically go online, and then they uh, um, they send you PMI sends you an email, uh, and after you do the payment, so you get accepted, you go online, you make the payment to PMI for to sit for the PMI ACP exam. Mm-hmm. Um, usually within the same day, 
usually within a couple of hours actually, they send you uh, an email, which is a, a certification email or a validation email with a list uh, of ProMetric centers, all right? So they send you an email, say, okay, your application has been accepted. You're ready to go to sit for the exam. Here's a ProMetric website. Go on the ProMetric website and go ahead and find a testing center close to you. So as we know from PMP exam prep, same for PMI ACP, ProMetric is the company that PMI uses exclusively, I believe globally, to sit for the test centers. The reason being is they have very, very strict guidelines that are consistent in all test centers, and also they use standardized tests. Um, So you might be sitting in a room, someone doing the PMI-ACP. They also might be doing the PMP exam prep. They could be doing uh, something like a Microsoft certification or an ITIL or, you know, a Six Sigma. Anything. Any, could be anything. So once I got that email, I found a test center close to me. And the nice thing was it was only 10 miles away from me where the PMP exam Lovely. prep one was 38 miles away. So that was nice. Um, so basically I got online, I, uh, I made the appointment and, um, I was ready to go for that exam. And it, it took me only, uh, I was able to schedule it within four days of when I got that, uh, validation email, uh, from PMI. Didn't you reschedule at some point? I did. I rescheduled a couple of times um, because of the fact that I was ready to go, but I wasn't ready to go. So what happened was, and that's a very good question, if you reschedule within 30 days of your, or uh, um, outside of 30 days for your PMI ACP exam, right. and this is true for all PMP exams, I believe now, there is no penalty in rescheduling. If you reschedule within the 30 days, like within 30 days of your exam, there's a $70 charge. So right. I rescheduled twice and I got hit once with the $70 charge. Okay. Oh. So in other words, if my PMA ACP exam is tomorrow yeah. and I reschedule today, right. I have to pay $70 to reschedule. But if my exam is 32 days from today, it's free. That's correct. I can reschedule. That's correct. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that was part one of our discussion with Kevin Riley on becoming PMI ACP certified. That's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. And as always, you can find us on the web at pm-podcast.com. If you are a project manager and you would like to become either PMP or PMI ACP certified, then the easiest way to do so is with our sister podcasts the PM PrepCast or the Agile PrepCast and study for the exam by watching the in-depth exam prep video training from pmprepcast.com. Please send your emails to info at pm-podcast.com and when you write, please tell me where in the world you are writing from. And finally, we have this. Why put off writing your status report until tomorrow if you can put it off forever? Until next time.